Alright guys, welcome back to day 21. Uh, so in the previous video, we figured out how to implement the current time functionality inside a code. But one thing that I forgot to do was change the name of the variable of x because I was in a lot of hurry. And x might be good for short term kind of implementation because I can just explain it to you properly like very very quickly. But in the long term when other people are going to be reading your code or even you are going to be reading your code after maybe 6 months or 1 year, you won't even remember what this x means. So we are going to change this uh, x variable to something else. I'm just going to refactor it so that everything, uh, every variable where we have used x changes automatically. If you are in some kind of different id like atom or sublime, this functionality is also over there. But I'm using pycharm so I can refactor by just right click on it. So I'm just going to change the variable name to maybe current underscore time. And yeah, this will help us remember what we were uh, doing over in our while statement and other stuff so yeah now that we have gotten it out of the way uh, what are we going to be doing in this video so in this video we are going to be learning something about events and bindings and how do you override default methods inside a kinta window specifically this cross button so when this cross button is pressed it just closes down the window it doesn't do anything now what if we could override this uh, cross button to, to do something else maybe uh, show a pop-up hey do you really want to exit this window yes or no or something like that but it's, it's not very necessary right so why exactly are we overriding this cross button to do something if you don't still don't understand what we mean by overriding as we uh, implement what we are doing you'll be able to understand exactly what i mean but let's understand what why are we even overriding this cross button which if you are executing the code and you are actually creating this music player and playing the files you must know that it after playing the file while during playing the file if we close if we close this window it shows you an error so we are going to go to file and open i'm just going to show you uh, what kind of error it throws and explain it to you why this error is being shown so i'm just going to click on play and then i'm going to pre uh, press on this cross button and we are going to discuss the error so let's click on play Oh, misty eye of the mountain. As you can see, it throws us an error which says main thread is not in the main loop. So what is happening is when we close, uh, when we close down the window, let me just reload it again. Uh, yeah, so when we close down the window, when the music is playing in the background, what is happening is because we are using threads, our main loop, that is the window where the music is being played, doesn't automatically close so what we have to do is we have to override this cross button and we have to tell explicitly to our kinter window key when this cross button is pressed make sure that you stop the music and then close this window so how do we override this cross button we'll just go down and over here we are just going to write root dot protocol uh, protocol basically means a way of communication and inside this we are going to write w let's all in capital letters we are going to write wm underscore window underscore delete and after that we are going to write the function name which we want to be called when we press this cross button so i'm just going to call the function uh, on closing which we haven't created yet but we'll create it uh, not in all caps i just want it in uh, small letters now i'm just going to create a function let's call it on underscore closing and inside this function we are going to do something a little bit uh, like this you can also use this to play some kind of a prank on someone so i'm just going to show you the fun part so i'm just going to write kinter dot message box dot info and inside this i'm just going to put in the title uh, let's call it prank and over here in the message we are just going to write uh, you have been pranked this window won't close uh, we'll have to use double quotes all right one close and then we'll just put in an evil laugh <laughs> all right and uh, let's see what's up let's see what happens when we actually execute this functionality so let's reload it and then when we crisp when we click on this cross button it actually closes it doesn't uh, work so what, what what did you do wrong uh, let's see all right i got it so instead of this uh, being over here we'll just remove it and uh, we're going to paste it over here and this should work so let's reload our program 
and now when we press when we press on this uh, cross button it shows us an uh, pop-up which says you have been pranked this window won't close and even if we click ok this is not going to close uh, because we haven't implemented uh, the functionality that enables this window to close uh, take a guess how do we actually close this window take just take a random guess think about it for two seconds maybe pause the video how exactly do we destroy this window and i have given you a pretty big hint how you destroy the window is you just write root dot destroy and that's pretty much it so now we can click on this uh, close button it gives us this uh, pop-up and when now we click on okay it's gonna close the window so now instead of uh, doing this uh, this this prank message we are just going to write stop underscore music which is going to stop the music and it won't give us any kind of error now so let's click on play and now uh, i can choose uh, some kind of uh, file and see if it works let's choose journey.wave now we'll click on play and then we'll click on the cross button without stopping the music and because we have used stop underscore music over here uh, it won't show us an error so let's click on play and now it doesn't give us an error it automatically exits the program anyways guys this is pretty much it for day 21 it was this was a pretty short video we didn't do a lot uh, we just learned about something known as events and bindings so what why is it called events and bindings because we are overriding an event and we are saying hey Kinto, you don't handle how the cross button is pressed we are going to automatically make a function and that function is going to handle how this cross button behaves obviously you can override a lot more stuff on Kinto for example when you press this uh, maximize button minimize button how we click on this when what happens when we right click on this window what happens when we left click on this window a lot of stuff maybe capture some kind of keyboard events and stuff like that but we are not doing this in our music player because it is not required. You can just Google that if you want to, how to capture keyboard events uh, in a, a Kinter window or something like that. But we have captured this on underscore uh, closing function, this close functionality inside our Kinter window so that you have an idea what is happening behind the scenes when we when we use root dot protocol and when we use events and bindings. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. Tomorrow we are going to be learning something interesting because we are going to be learning how to add a playlist to our music player. And for that, we are going to be using a different widget called list box inside our GUI. So I'll see you on day 22.